I'm here with Barry Lamb, Professor of Philosophy here at Vassar College, and we're going to be talking about conciliationism. So, when did conciliationism come up recently at Vassar? Uh, we just had a philosopher's holiday, um, which is one of our uh, speak talk series here at, here at Vassar. The department has uh, a couple of these a semester, and somebody I know um, pretty well, Tom Kelly from Princeton University, um, gave a talk arguing against a position he called conciliationism, um, which is a position in epistemology. Um, it comes up uh, in the context of the following question. How should you um, change your mind when you're faced with people who you don't think are better than you or are worse than you, um, but you find out that they disagree with you about something? Right. So what could be like a, a real-world example to sort of latch on to? Okay, um, a really good real-world example that um, I think that um, people have actually studied um, are with respect to um, matters of fact like that are hard to find out. Like whether or not, um, say, the death penalty has a deterrent effect. So um, you could be for the death penalty, you could be against the death penalty on moral grounds. But there's this factual question as to whether or not, in fact, if you have the death penalty, it'll deter people from murdering um, or other whatever crime it is that has that penalty, um, or whether it doesn't. And um, to study this, I mean, you, you can't really just go about, you know, asking people who don't murder, you know, did you not murder because there's a death penalty for murdering? I mean, you can't really, you know, you can't study it that way. Um, rather, you, you, the only thing you really can do is to look at places that have a death penalty, and look at places that don't have the death penalty, and look at the murder rates, and compare them, right? Um, well, it turns out that um, it's actually kind of mixed, right? There are some places where um, you have the death penalty, and it's got a, a lower rate of murder than another place, um, but then it actually is vice versa, too. You can have places that um, don't have the death penalty and have a lower rate of murder than places that do. Um, and when you're presented with data like this, you know, you, you, you can make a decision as to whether or not it has a deterrent effect. Um, and it turns out if you give, you know, two people, um, it, they could be of different political persuasions or not, um, the same exact data, the same exact evidence, as we would say in, in philosophy, um, it's possible for them to come up with different opinions about it. So one person can emerge, and with that evidence and believe that the death penalty does have a deterrent effect. Another person could look at the exact same data and say it doesn't. Um, and you could see how this goes. You know, they, one person could say, well, overall, I think the places that show that the murder rate is lower where there's a death penalty, um, those are the better case studies, whereas the places that don't show that, they're not as good for some or another reason. And two people can have different opinions about this kind of thing. Well, okay, now you form your opinion, you come outside of the room, and you meet the other person, right? Now, going into the room, you didn't think that that person was any better than you, and you don't think that they were worse than you at assessing these facts, right. okay? Um, and now you find out that they disagree with you, okay? Now, how should you change your opinion about this, right? So there's a, there's a few things that you can... Um, you can do. You know, one thing you can do is to say, well, we disagree, but my opinion is correct. Uh, I'm the one who assessed the evidence better than he. He must have mislooked something, right? Another thing you can do is to say, well, he's completely correct, right? Um, or another thing you can do, well, now I don't know, because we have the same evidence and somebody else disagrees. Conciliationism is the view that's closer to the last view, which is um, when you're, you know, you, just because they disagree, you shouldn't really use that as a way to conclude, well, it must be I'm better right. than he is at assessing the evidence. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't seem like the other way around for, same, for the similar reasons. You know, you can't now say that he's the one who's better at it. Um, the only thing left is to say, well, it must be that uh, 
we're both just as good and we disagree, and that's enough for me to say, well, I'm going to change my mind now. Now I don't know. Right. Okay? So where does this come up, like, in your classes or something like that? Um, well, it comes up a lot in introductory classes when I teach, um, well, I would, whatever I teach, it could be metaphysics, it could be epistemology, but mostly in the area of ethics and political um, thinking, where um, there's this tendency among people coming out of high school, um, freshmen and sophomores who take these introductory classes, and there's an initial reaction that people have when they encounter um, reasonable disagreement, even if it comes with disagreements against their own views, even on strong moral matters. Um, and one of the very natural reactions that people have um, is when they're faced with that, is to say, I guess I don't know. It might be all relative. Right? Um, right down to things like murder and incest. And, I mean, nobody would be outside of maybe the classroom might you know, be inclined to think that. But when you're faced with somebody with good reasons for it, and you don't think you're better than them at assessing that question, you don't think you're worse than them at assessing that question, um, what natural response is to say, I don't know. Um, but if that's true, that actually is really wide ranging. Right? You actually might think that any time there's disagreement about that, you have to be agnostic, as we say. Um, matters of religion, you have to be agnostic about. Uh, moral matters, a lot of factual matters in which there's disagreement about. Um, you know, you have to be agnostic about across the board. Um, and this is a skeptical view, right? So one of the things that we epistemologists like to study is skepticism. When people just decide that there's no better reason for me to believe this rather than that or anything. Right. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much for this Thank interview. You. We'll disagree to agree or something like <laughs> that.